Having a dedicated lab environment for learning hacking concepts is a great way to improve your skills and simulate real world attacks. This is why capture the flag contests are super popular in information security because having a, a challenge like a puzzle that you know that there's a solution for can help drive you to learn something you previously didn't know. One of the greatest things about the cloud is that it's very easy for us to go and deploy systems and resources. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how to leverage a few different tools to automate the creation of your own cloud hacking lab. In this video, we will be leveraging both AWS and Azure to spin up resources so we can experiment with popular cloud-based attacks like public availability of resources, server-side request forgery, and other common cloud-based misconfigurations. So to do that, we need to create accounts in both AWS and Azure. Now, if this is your first time signing up for an AWS or Azure account, they have free tier access for 12 months that allow you to deploy a number of resources in each service for up to 12 months. Now. After that 12 months, if you, or if you've had an account for a long time, keep in mind that a lot of the items, a lot of the resources uh, that you might deploy actually still fall under that free tier access. Things like IM users, things like creating an Azure AD user actually do not accrue costs. However, things like deploying virtual machines, storage, uh, lots of those types of things actually will start accru accruing costs. So as we deploy resources within our lab, keep in mind that if you leave them up, they will accrue costs. The process for signing up for an account on each of these services is fairly straightforward. Just click create a free account and walk through the process of creating your own account. Now, I teach a class called Breaching the Cloud where I actually have the, an initial setup guide where I walk you through this too. So if you click the link in the description below uh, for btc.breakforge.io, it will take you to my setup instructions for the class where I actually have a couple steps here to create those accounts as well. So steps four and five, our Amazon Web Services account setup, and in this in this section, uh, walk you through literally every step of the way uh, to create your Amazon AWS account. Same thing for Azure. So step five, Azure account, and that will walk you through the creation of setting up that account. After setting up our accounts, the next thing we need to worry about is what testing system are we going to actually be using while we're hacking our own lab. So I highly recommend using a Linux-based system. And the reason is because a lot of the popular cloud hacking tools are command line driven for Linux-based systems. I actually have a custom-built VM that I provide for my Breaching the Cloud class. You can find that at the same btc.breakforge.io that I mentioned previously. Um, so this VM, it's an Ubuntu-based VM. It's got a number of tools uh, for cloud hacking already installed. It's got the AWS CLI, Terraform, and a number of other popular cloud hacking tools. Now. Again, this is something you could use, but if you want to use your own system, feel free to just uh, for the sake of this demo and for the sake of this, this video, you will need three things. You'll need Terraform, uh, which I will link in the description below. You will need the AZ CLI and you'll also need uh, the AWS CLI. To help us deploy resources within our accounts quickly, we're going to leverage a tool called Terraform. Now, Terraform is what is known as infrastructure as code. What that means is it provides us the ability to now write a piece of code that says exactly what we want to spin up within our own accounts. Now, don't worry, you don't need to know how to code Terraform for this particular demo. I will likely make another video to show how you can start to build your own Terraform scripts. But for this one, we're going to leverage some tools that are already built around Terraform. One of the first tools we're going to leverage to deploy infrastructure to our own cloud environments is called CloudGoat. So CloudGoat is from Rhino Security Labs. It creates vulnerable scenarios within your own AWS environment. Now, again, this leverages Terraform. So what it does is it has pieces of code that it will run that will connect using your own AWS credentials to your account, spin up resources within, within your own account, and provide you a set of access keys as a starting point for a scenario. So first, to, to use CloudGoat, we need an administrative AWS account or an AWS account that has enough privileges to deploy and destroy resources within your own account. So within your own AWS console, if you navigate to the IAM page, you can click users and create a new user. I'm going to call this one just AWS admin. Um, and we want to create programmatic access keys. So we'll do next to permissions, and then I will attach existing policies and we'll just give it the administrator access policy, probably a little bit more privileges than it actually needs, but for the sake of spinning up an account that will help us to deploy resources, this is an easy way to do it. So click create user, and then we need the access key and the secret access key. 
So here we've got the access key ID. This is something that we will leverage as effectively a username of sorts. And then the secret access key, this is effectively a password. So in order to set up that account on our system, uh, we can run AWS. So this is the AWS CLI tool, configure, and then we're gonna create a new profile. So dash dash profile, and I'm gonna call this AWS admin. And then it will prompt us for the access key ID. So let's go ahead and copy that, paste that in. And then it should prompt us for the secret access key as well. So let's copy the secret access key and we will paste that in. And then we don't need to set a default region or format for this particular demo. And our AWS admin account should now be able to authenticate. Um, we can test that out with AWS STS git dash caller dash identity dash dash profile AWS admin. And we should get something back uh, along these lines. Now that we have our credentials set, let's go and install CloudGoat so that we can start deploying resources to our account. So first up, in the GitHub repository for CloudGoat, uh, you can find the quick start guide here where we can go and git clone the repo, first of all. Then we're going to cd into that directory, uh, and then we are going to install the requirements with pip3, so pip3 install dash r requirements.txt. And then once that's done, uh, we will need to chmod the cloudgoat.py script so that we can make it executable and now we should be able to run cloud dot slash cloud goat dot pi uh config profile and what this does is will enable us to set up a profile within cloud goat so first up it says no configuration file was found uh would we like to create a default profile now we'll say y for yes and then this is where we need to enter the name of the profile so we just set up that profile with aws admin so this is what i'm going to enter here and it will grab the credentials from my local AWS credential store. And now CloudGoat has access to those keys and can leverage them to perform various functions like deploying resources. So the next thing, um, one thing that's really cool about CloudGoat is it does actually whitelist your IP so that only your system or your, your IP address can access the resources that it spins up. Because keep in mind, it is deploying vulnerable resources. So uh, if you run dot uh, slash cloudgoat.py, config whitelist dash dash auto it will automatically attempt to discover your ip address and create a whitelist file now the cool thing about cloud goat is it has a number of scenarios so instead of just deploying a ton of random infrastructure it has very specific scenarios that are almost like little mini ctfs so you can, if you scroll down in the GitHub repo, you can see the scenarios that are available. So first up, we have things like vulnerable Lambda functions. We have things like IAM privilege escalation by rollback. So this is something where you would start with a highly limited IAM user, uh, but the attacker is able to review previous IAM policy versions and restore one, which actually allows full admin privileges. Uh, there's a number of very interesting, very common attack scenarios that you can deploy very easily to your own cloud environment. Now, the other thing that's really neat about CloudGoat is if you look in the scenarios directory, you can actually go and dive into each one and see what exactly it's being, what is being spun up within your account. So for example, uh, this EC2 SSRF, like this particular one spins up one VPC with uh, one EC2 instance, one Lambda function, one S3 bucket. It also creates uh, a few different IAM users that will be the starting point. And in terms of exploitation route, it's really neat because it can kind of, if you, if you want to hint, it can kind of give you the uh, direction you might need of where you should go to determine the vulnerability path. And there's also a full cheat sheet uh, should you run into any problems. So how do you actually spin up a scenario in your account? Well, first, let's, let's try the privilege escalation by rollback module. So if we run dot slash cloudgoat.py in that cloudgoat directory, create so it's going to create resources and then i am underscore privilege or priv esque underscore by underscore rollback so let's run that and what it will do is this is where this is where terraform comes in so you should see terraform start to initialize any modules that it needs to create those resources within your own account so after it initializes it will then determine whether or not it can actually spin those up and start beginning or it will begin to uh, deploy those resources for that specific scenario to your own aws account and when it's done what happens is it will provide a set of credentials so one of the cool things about cloud goat is it 
starts you out with a set of credentials. So like in this scenario, um, we can see we have an access key ID and a secret key for a user called Raynor. Now, this set of keys is our launching point. So this is this would be where we start our cloud hacking journey. We say something along the lines of, hey, maybe we found this set of keys in a code repository, or maybe uh, it was in a an a S3 bucket publicly available, and now we're at a starting point for performing some cloud hacking. What's neat about Terraform is how easy it is to both spin up and destroy resources. So when we're done with this scenario, so let's say we we you know went through the entire privilege escalation process, we can go back to Cloud Goat and we can say uh, instead of running the create command here, we run destroy. I am provest by rollback. It'll say yes. Yeah. It'll ask us if we want, or if we're sure we want to do it. We'll say yes, and it will go and actually destroy those resources. On the Azure side, if we want to spin up vulnerable infrastructure within that environment, uh, we can leverage a few different uh, tools that are built around Terraform as well. The first one I'm going to show you is called Azure Goat. And Azure Goat is very similar to Cloud Goat in that it leverages a set of credentials to authenticate your account and spins up vulnerable infrastructure. Uh, now for this one, we do need a, an administrative account that can spin up uh, resources within your own Azure tenant. So let's set it up. First up, we need to clone the repository for Azure Goat. So we'll get clone that. And then once that is uh, once that is downloaded, uh, we just need to CD into the Azure Goat directory and then run AZ login. So this is the AZ CLI initiating a an authentication process for uh, the CLI tool so that it can actually deploy resource, resources to our account. Now, what it should do is launch a browser uh, to authenticate. And if you're already authenticated to your Microsoft account, you may see it here and you can just click it. Uh, otherwise, you may have to actually log in with your user and password. Once you're logged in, it will say, you've logged into Microsoft Azure. And if we go back to the CLI, we should see uh, some results that indicate that we are logged in. After logging in, we need to create a resource group for Azure Goat to store all the resources within uh, called Azure Goat underscore app. So if you go into your Azure portal, uh, you can navigate to resource groups. And then once you're there, you can click create and then create a resource group titled Azure Goat underscore app. Now we'll leverage Terraform to deploy resources to our account. So uh, within that Azure Goat directory, we just need to type Terraform in it, and it should initialize all of the modules that it's necessary for it to deploy the resources that are within the Terraform code that is within the Azure Goat directory. And then once that's done, we will apply the Terraform changes to our account. So Terraform apply dash dash auto approve. And then now Azure Goat will leverage Terraform to go authenticate to our account and spin up a number of different resources. And you can see uh, a bit of an overview of the escalation paths for Azure Goat in the directory here as well. And if you want to learn more about what exactly is going on, um, you can look through the solutions uh, for each of the each of the uh, modules here as well. Um, but so this is this is very similar to the way Cloud Goat has deployed vulnerable resources. Uh, what's neat about doing this is it does spin up a number of different resources that if you want to just poke around, it's something you can do, right? Like you can log into your account, attempt to like poke around, try to find what resources are there and attempt to identify any sort of vulnerabilities. Once the Azure Goat Terraform script has completed running, uh, we can navigate back to the Azure portal here and we can go back to resource groups. So within the Azure portal, go to resource groups and then navigate to the Azure Goat underscore app resource group. And then from here, we can see a few of the resources that were deployed. We can see we've got some functions, we've got a storage account, we've got an automation account, we've got a virtual machine, uh, we've got some disks and a few other items as well. There's a Cosmos DB in there. And if we click on the function app, uh, we can see where the actual starting point for this particular scenario is, which is this, this URL here. So if we open that link, we can see that Azure Goat actually created a web application as a starting point uh, for this particular scenario. So if you open that up, you should get results that look somewhat similar to this, where we've got a, a an Azure Goat web app as the starting point. So poke around, have fun with that. Again, keep in mind that this is spinning up resources that can accrue costs. So the longer you leave it running, the more costs it's going to accrue. So once you're done, you know, hacking your your cloud lab, spin it down. And to do that with with Terraform and the Azure Goat modules, uh, instead of running Terraform Apply, we can run Terraform Destroy dash dash auto approve, click enter, and that will now go through the process of 
destroying all of those resources that Terraform spun up within our account. So Azure Ghost is really great if you want to look at infrastructure on Azure, but what if we want to look at Azure Active Directory some? Well, another tool I want to show you is one called Purple Cloud. So Purple Cloud, uh, again, linked in the description, um, is a tool that has a number of various scenarios. So let's look at the overview page on Purple Cloud. So there's a hybrid identity lab, uh, detection engineering and purple teaming, and then there's an Azure AD lab, in addition to uh, a number of other potential labs that you could spin up leveraging Terraform. So let's check out the Azure AD lab. So first off, to install uh, Purple Cloud, we need to clone the repository. So if we go back to the Git repo here, we can copy this and we can Git clone the Purple Cloud repo. And then to install it, there's a few things we need. Uh, we need the Faker uh, <laughs> Python library. So let's pip3 install Faker. And then from there, we need to log in as a global administrator. So the same thing we did on the uh, the Azure Goat uh, portion, if we do AZ login again, it'll initiate that authentication. Again, you have to log in as a global admin for this particular tool. So I'm gonna log in with one of my global admins here. And if we go back to the, the terminal, we should see that we are successfully authenticated. And now after we are authenticated, we can generate Terraform. And so the way that Purple Cloud is set up is it has a set of various Python scripts that when you run them, they generate Terraform scripts to, to carry out the, the uh, deployment of resources within your account. So if we CD into Purple Cloud and generators, we can see the various uh, generator scenarios they have here. So if we if we let's let's focus on Azure AD here because we want to perform some Azure AD based attacks. Now you can see there's an Azure AD Python script here. So there's a few different options um, whenever you go to create the the Azure AD users within your tenant. Now. What's cool is Purple Cloud also has a few uh, service principle abuse primitive attacks as well. So for example, we could run Python 3, Azure AD. Um, we can give it a count of users. So you can tell it how many users we want, first of all. So like we can follow uh, like the, the documentation here and just create 25 users. We can give it a UPN. So this will be the domain name uh, that you want your users to have within your own environment. You can say how many applications we want to create. So in this case, we're going to create seven applications. Um, we're going to create an application administrator. So dash AA, we're going to create a global admin uh, as well for one of the, the service principles. And then we're also going to create a privileged uh, role administrator on one of those seven accounts. And so when you run that, what it'll do is create the Terraform scripts that are necessary for deploying all of those resources. And you can go modify things like the usernames, emails, if you want. Otherwise, it is time for us to actually deploy it via Terraform. So next up, we will use Terraform init again, like we did on the, uh, the Azure Goat. Portion. So Terraform init, it will grab any sort, any of the initialization modules it needs. You can run Terraform plan to plan it out to make sure that it will run successfully. Uh, so we'll do Terraform plan uh, dash out equals run dot plan. And then after the plan is successful, uh, we can apply it to our account. So Terraform apply run dot plan. And then what will happen now is it will create a password and it will go and start to create those users within our account. Now, why would you want to do this, right? Why would you why would you care about the Azure AD side? Well, there's a number of Azure AD specific escalation paths, vulnerabilities that you may want to assess uh, within your own lab environment as well. Uh, so in this case, we created the 25 users. We've got our Azure AD password for the users here. And if we go back to the Azure portal and we navigate to the, the users page within our, our own Azure Active Directory, we should see all of those user accounts in there now. So uh, once the portal loads here, we will scroll down and we should see, we do, we see a number of accounts. So we've got you know a number of automatically generated accounts within our own environment now. And so this would be a good point to jump off and try to perform any sort of Azure Active Directory based attacks. You could do things like 
you know, password spraying users. You could you could go and manually edit one of these to be a weak password and, you know, attempt to do password spraying attacks to demonstrate password spraying. You could, uh, you know, authenticate with the application administrator and try to find paths of escalation. And, you know, there's, there's plenty of other types of attacks you might want to attempt here as well. Again, once you're done with that lab, you can go and destroy all of those users with Terraform extremely easily by running Terraform destroy. And that will go and remove all of those users from your account. So to summarize, we were able to leverage the power of the cloud and automation to build out our own cloud hacking lab quickly. So to do that, we, we created AWS and Azure accounts. We set up our own testing machine to authenticate to each cloud provider. We leveraged Terraform to go and authenticate and spin up those resources for us. Now, today we leveraged three tools that were pre-built to create specific scenarios. However, should you wanna create custom scenarios, um, keep an eye out for another episode that I'm gonna create where I'm gonna show you um, how you might start to write your own Terraform scripts uh, yourself. So for next steps though, you know, after you've, you've spun up some of these resources, what can you do? Well, keep an eye out for some videos that I'm gonna be making that are, I'm gonna start showing a few different tools that we use on cloud assessments to try to find those vulnerabilities. Um, but poke around, see what you can find, and if you enjoyed this video, I'd be extremely grateful if you click that subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next episode.